So, what about a new ham buying their first radio? Let me start by saying I don't buy into the notion of there being an entry-level radio or a so-called beginner radio. So what is the best radio for a new ham? There isn't one. The question should be, what's the best radio for you? And to answer that, I would need to ask, what's your interest in amateur radio? I ask this because what you want to look at is your personal interest in the hobby and also the area in which you live. If you get a technician class license and you live in an area with, uh, say, in a rural area with no repeaters or no VHF activity, you're wasting your money. Now, if your interest in ham radio is specific to just one purpose, such as talking to local friends, then a VHF and a UHF radio is great. If you're interested in global communication, then you'll want more than VHF and UHF. Another issue I find with VHF and UHF is since it's mostly local, you need to find out how active VHF and UHF is in your area, along with repeater availability. It would be a shame to buy a VHF, UHF radio only to find out there are no repeaters in your area and no activity. I live in an area where there are at least six repeaters that I can hit with my radio, but the bands are mostly dead. If I'd have started with VHF, UHF, I would not be a ham at this time. I would have quit. Another problem on those bands is you don't solicit contacts by calling C to Q. You use the words monitoring or listening, and almost no one ever answers those, especially in my area. But if it wasn't for those little bits of HF privileges that I had as a novice and you have as a tech, there would be no reason to, to be a ham. It is, yeah, it is possible. You can go global on those VHF, UHF uh, bands through Echolink, satellite, moon bounce, and rare propagation conditions. However, HF is often open on some bands each day. So, if I were starting out now, I'd want a radio that is an all-band, all-mode radio. Because you, know, you don't know if, once you get your technician license, you may want to go into the general class and get those bands. And by buying one now, you would have those bands. You wouldn't have to buy another radio. Also, if you ever wanted to do contesting in the future, those contesters use single sideband. They don't use FM, even, even on the... Uh, upper bands, the VHF, UHF bands. So if you have a technician class license at this point, you have those privileges plus you have HF privileges of 15 meters, 40 meters, and 80 meters with CW and Morse code on those three bands. On 10 meters, you have CW digital voice. That way, while you're a technician class, you have everything available as a technician Plus, as you upgrade, you won't need to spend more money in the long run to e keep upgrading your radio. Furthermore, if you're, going, if you're interested in going mobile or portable, you would not want to buy a base station only. I recommend that you get a mobile radio that uses an external power supply. Then you can do both mobile and base. I have three of my radios that use external power supplies and I can but they'll also work in the car. I can put them in a in a vehicle. Now the other point to consider each consider is your current financial situation because that'll determine what you can afford at this time. So I'm going to give you some options, show you some options on the screen for radios that the prices are pretty high right now. And I recommend, but I recommend, the Yesu FT991A. 
because that one is all mowed, all banned. You buy that, you're good to go, no matter how high you uh, upgrade, how fast you upgrade, or how high you go. That will cover everything you need, unless you want to get into gigahertz like the microwave or something like that. And then there's no radios for those. you got to pretty much find surplus or, or build your own. Now, you could, due to the price, you could look for a used one. But don't expect to have a huge saving. Uh, most people out there are asking a pretty high price even for, for used ones. But you may find a deal. You can look on, on uh, the QRZ site or also other e used equipment sites. I'm not going to mention a lot of the uh, VHF, UHF only rigs because they have some things that I don't use so I'm not familiar with them like DMRS, wires, a bunch of other stuff that I don't, I don't know a lot about. You could find a local club and find out more about those and find out if they're used in your area. Ever since cell phones took over they pretty much run the auto patch capabilities that hams used to have. In the past, there were no cell phones. A two meter rig that could reach, like a handheld, that could reach a repeater that was a phone patch capable. I used that a lot, but now with cell phones, it's pretty much a moot point. And then there's the question that not many people ask. They usually ask, well, what kind of rig do I get? Well, you also have to worry about the type of antenna you get. So what is the best antenna? The best antenna? It's the most expensive one on the most expensive tower. But the point I'm trying to make when I make that statement is you can have the most expensive rig out there but if you have a lousy antenna you've wasted your money on that expensive rig. So when you look at buying a radio, consider the price of the antenna plus the feed line and then the price of the radio and what you can afford to get. You can. The good part is you don't actually need, you don't really need the best antenna. You don't really need the most expensive one. That is the best antenna, but you don't necessarily need it to get worldwide contacts. I'm going to list some antennas that, in my opinion, are not too expensive and should be worth hooking up to your radio. I won't list Yaggies, as it's obvious the bigger the better for those. However, realize that a good Yaggie close to the ground, in relationship to the lowest operating frequency you're going to be on, is not going to be too great. It's not going to work well if it's too close to the ground. You need height, especially with dipoles, horizontal dipoles, anything horizontal. You're going to need height, so you're going to need a mast or a tower or, or a tall building or something to put them on. Even Yaggies are essentially a dipole with a bunch of direction elements on them. Height, height is needed on those. If you don't like what you see on this list, you can, because of the price or whatever, you can just throw up a wire. Most of my antennas are wire antennas. I'm not the loudest guy out there when I'm transmitting, but I do get I do get DX. I have gone around the world with it. But it's a bit of a struggle to keep experimenting with antennas. So you can look at that list of antennas. Most of them are VHF. Um, or I mean HF, I'm sorry. Most of them are HF. But... Uh, you can look at those price-wise and see which one you might like, see which one fits in your yard or will fit on your house because that's another aspect of that. And then the feed liner coax. Without heavy explanation, here are my recommendations of the coax. Now here's a final point to make. I have heard of at least one person out there who, who does videos. He's very knowledgeable. He really knows what he's talking about. He has more experience than I do. And he says, don't buy any equipment until you get your license. 
and he's very adamant about that. He says it because he's seen people buy a radio before getting the license and then never get the license and now they're stuck with a radio they have to sell. I've seen that happen once. But from my personal experience, I bought my first radio before I got licensed. And having it in my possession motivated me to study harder for the less for the license. And at that and back then Morse code was required, so it really motivated me to learn Morse code because of that requirement. So you do what you think best. Wait till you get your license, then buy the radio, or buy the radio and see if it motivates you if you're if you're uh if you have a hard time studying. That the license isn't really a formidable thing to get. So I hope this helps. And if you like this video, please subscribe and like it. And happy radio hunting.